Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, Gibbs Beham Margulis equation, and uh, this equation it provides an information relating partial molar vapor pressure and composition of various components in the solution. So we can relate partial pressure Pi of any constituent to its mole fraction of any constituent and uh, with the help of uh, gibbs beham equation it gives the correlation between partial molar vapor pressure and composition of various compositions we are going to derive this equation from uh, gibbs beham equation and uh, we all know gibbs beham equation uh, that is uh, we can write n1 d mu1 plus n2 d mu2 and that is equal to Zero. So this is our uh, Gibbs Beham equation. If you want me to derive this Gibbs Beham equation, then uh, kindly write in the comments so that I may I will make a separate video on this. So uh, this Gibbs Beham equation and also uh, there is a one generalized uh, relation that is given by plus V D P and minus S D T plus V. So uh, this term now these two terms. We already know that dg is equal to vdp minus sdt. Okay, so we can introduce and this is the generalized form of uh, Gibbs Beham equation. So from where this came from, uh, I have already explained it in my Fugacity lecture. So the link is given in the description. You may refer that. Now, if we consider that our system is at constant temperature and constant pressure, that is when dt will be equal to 0 and dp is equal to 0 so when the system is at constant temperature and at constant pressure then at that time both these terms will be removed and hence we will have again d mu 1 plus n2 d mu 2 that will be equal to 0 okay now again just we will recall the definition of uh, mole fraction and mole fraction of any constituent x suppose I want to find out mole fraction of constituent 1 then x1 can be written as n1 upon n1 plus n2 that is it is the fraction of uh, the number of moles of that constituent divided by the total number of any particular constituent and similarly if I want to find the mole fraction of x2 then I will write n2 upon n1 plus n2 so this n1 and n2 that is a number of moles uh, we will convert it into mole fraction and for that we will divide both these terms by n1 plus n2 and over here also n1 plus n2 so when we divide both these terms by n1 plus n2 this term will be converted into its mole fraction so again n1 upon n1 plus n2 can be written as x1 and n2 upon n1 plus n2 can be written as x2 so we may substitute it as uh, x1 d mu1 plus x2 d mu2 will be equal to 0. Now the chemical potential of uh, any component I it is a function of temperature pressure and mole fraction. So uh, if we are studying any system uh, say a mixture of gases or a mixture of uh, we can say two liquids. Uh, so the chemical potential of that particular constituent if we are studying the mixture of gases then say mix mixture of uh, oxygen or the chemical potential of oxygen will be or it is the always the function of temperature pressure and its mole fraction so if we change anything then if we change temperature or if we change pressure or if we change mole fraction then the chem value of chemical potential will change okay so if we write we can write the change in the chemical potential will be equal to we can write d mu i upon dt into dp plus d mu i upon dp into so this will be at constant pressure and mole fraction similarly this will be at constant temperature and mole fraction into dp plus d mu i upon dxi this will be at constant temperature and pressure into dx i okay and at again if we consider that our system is at 
constant temperature and constant pressure both these terms that is dt will be equal to 0 and dp will be equal to 0 so both these terms will be equal to 0 and hence uh, both the terms will be neglected or it will be equal to 0 and hence we can write d mu i it will be equal to d mu i upon dxi into dxi so we have uh, d mu i is equal to d mu i upon dxi into dxi so for um, we can say for mu1 we can write uh, d mu1 is equal to d mu1 upon dx1 into dx1 and similarly for x2 we can write uh, d mu2 into upon dx2 into dx2 so for mu1 and mu2 we can substitute the individual values and hence we will have x1 is equal to sorry we will have x1 into d mu1 upon dx1 into dx1 plus x2 into d mu2 upon dx2 into dx2 and that will be equal to 0 okay further what we know is that chemical potential mu it is related to fugacity by the relation that is mu is equal to mu0 plus rt ln f further we know that uh, chemical potential mu is related to fugacity by relation mu is equal to mu0 plus rt ln f where mu0 is the chemical potential in its standard state so when uh, now we need to convert this mu in this particular form so we will differentiate this equation with respect to xi and upon differentiating we can make mu i is equal to this will be fi so we can write d mu i upon dxi at constant temperature and pressure will be equal to rt dln fi upon dxi at constant temperature and pressure okay so we have differentiated with respect to x uh, xi and as this is a constant term differentiation will be equal to zero now we will substitute this value of d mu i upon dxi in these two terms that is for x1 and x2 so we can write and we will directly take rt common and it will be transferred to right hand side so rt can be taken as common into x1 into dln f1 upon dx1 at constant temperature and pressure into dx1 plus x2 into dln f2 upon dx2 temperature and pressure into dx2 so into dx2 will be equal to 0 now rt will go that side so rt can be removed and hence we can write x1 into dln f1 upon dx1 into dx1 plus x2 into dln f2 upon dx2 into dx2 and that will be equal to 0 now further uh, we all know that the total number of moles that is if we write x1 plus x2 then the total number of moles will be equal to 1 and if we differentiate this then dx1 can be written as minus dx2 okay so this fact we will use in above equation and over here what we will do is in place of dx2 we can substitute minus dx1 okay so hence our equation will become x1 into dln f1 upon dx1 into dx1 plus x2 into dln f2 upon dx2 and this will be minus dx1 and that will be equal to 0 again minus dx1 or dx1 can be taken common and it can be removed so our equation will become x1 into dln f1 upon dx1 minus x2 into dln f2 upon dx2 and that is equal to 0 dln f1 can be written as or dln f can be written as df upon f okay so we will uh, use this and we will convert dln f1 
to dln f1 upon f1 and dln f2 will be dln f2 upon f2 so uh, we can write x1 upon f1 into df1 upon dx1 minus 2 upon f2 into df2 upon dx2 and that will be equal to 0 and we can take on uh, take this term on right hand side so our relation will become x1 upon f1 into df1 upon dx1 will be equal to x2 upon f2 into df2 upon dx2 and this relation is known as gibbs duham margulis equation this relation is valid whether the vapor phase behaves ideally or it behaves non-ideally and if the vapor phase behaves ideally then for ideal system we can write fugacity is equal to partial pressure or is equal to the vapor pressure and hence uh, fugacity or fugacity will be replaced by pressure and we can write x1 upon f1 sorry we can write p1 for ideal system so we can write dp1 upon dx1 is equal to x2 upon p2 into dp2 upon dx2 so this relation is used or this is also one of the form of uh, duham margulis gibbs duham margulis equation and uh, this relation it also implies that if the mole fraction or if there is an increase in mole fraction of the one component then uh, there is also a perfect amount of change in the mole fraction of other component as we know that dx1 is equal to minus dx2 so with a change in one of the component or with a change in the mole fraction of one of the component there is always an opposite change of mole fraction on another component so hence uh, these are the two relations this one relation and two relation on both these relations are known as uh, Gibbs-Duham-Margulis equation. Hope the topic is clear. Thank you very much.